Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Writing thesis is not an easy task. You must have seen that it's a very difficult task. It want to check what you have already learnt in different topics. You may choose one subject concerning one topic, but the way a thesis is written tells you that how you have to be very specific. You have to prove that why you have chosen a certain topic and what do you want to tell? Do you want to tell something new uh, about the topic or you want to challenge some reality or whatever? So, writing, top, uh, writing thesis is not an easy job. You start from choosing topic and then understanding the nature of your topic. Then you prepare a synopsis and writing synopsis is also a difficult task. So, after going through all these steps, you come to the, to the main element of the thesis. Here you start with the introduction and introduction has the introduction of the topic and its background, its purpose, its need, its statement of the problem, its rationale, its hypothesis and then you switch over on to next topic that is literature review and lit literature review you give proof of uh, what you have uh, in your mind regarding your topic and the uh, thought of different people on the topic. So, we've discussed that how many citi uh, citations should be given in this topic at least we have given a baseline 75 to 100. They can be uh, more or less according to the uh, need. But the most important thing in this regard is the end of this topic and that is that here you have to end this, the last of the literature review with those uh, citation which actually prove your hypothesis. Then you switch over to the methodology. In methodology we did, we did discuss some aspect of methodology that what method are used. But we have not uh, gone into details. Today we will be discussing these uh, things. And then we go on to fourth chapter that is interpretation of data or analysis of data and then the conclusion. We still have few topics to cover, but today we begin with, uh, with this methodology of uh, research. That what method you use here? First of all, you need to understand different approaches, perspective or paradigm. That's very important that what are the research paradigms, then what are the types of research and then what are the methods of research. So basically, I will be discussing these three uh, things. What are the perspective approaches of uh, research and uh, what are the types of research and methods of research? It's very important. So, there are two major perspective, call them perspective, call them approaches or call them paradigm. They are differently named by different people, but they all uh, refer to one single reality. So, today we begin with the two paradigm. One is qualitative and the other is quantitative. So, the research is basically divided into two types, qualitative and quantitative research. Then we uh, discuss different types of uh, research, either uh, they are qualitative or they are quantitative and then what, what methods are used for qualitative and what methods are used for quantitative. And the this very thing, this very approach that you choose 
goes in your further chapters like data analysis. So analysis is also subject to your choice of the paradigm, which paradigm you are going to use. So you will be making an analysis of your data according to these two paradigm, either it is qualitative or quantitative. We can define quantitative perspective that it basically holds an objective reality that can be expressed numerically. I mean statistically, numerically, the reality that is objective and can be expressed numerically. So as a consequence, the quantitative perspective emphasizes studies that are experimental in nature, emphasize measurement and search for a relationship. So the quantitative perspective or paradigm basically is objective and numerical. It emphasizes studies which are experimental, which takes into consideration basic experiment, what uh, method are used for experiment or what approaches used will be discussing soon. Experimental in nature and it emphasizes measurement, measuring different things. It may be a sample from the population or from uh, inanimated object and search for the relationship, finds basically the relationship that exists between two things. So basically it wants to predict that there exists any relationship or there does not exist any relationship. So one of the paradigm or main perspective is quantitative and as I told you, you must remember that quantitative perspective is objective and numerical and emphasizes experiment, measurement, etc. Normally, when we are dealing with this type of paradigm, we use such a term, such term as variables, controls, validity, reliability, hypothesis, statistically significant. So these uh, are normally the terms that we use. We do need to use certain terms in our thesis and we need to be familiar with this term. I will try to give some glossary of the terms at the end of this thesis. You will find them in, in the handout. I tell you one thing that there are certain things I am not going into details uh, but I would like you to give you some detail of these things and you will find the details in the handout. To understand the concept of a thesis or dissertation, you need to listen to the lecture, you need to go through the handouts. After that, you will be able to understand what is thesis writing. And uh, before thesis writing, you must make yourself familiar with synopsis writing or proposal writing. So I was talking about two perspectives. So we have seen quantitative perspective. So for as the qualitative approaches, phenomenological view, innate reality inheres in the perception of individual. Such studies basically discuss meaning, understanding, observation and take place in naturally occurring situation. So if a study uses language such as naturalistic, field study, case study, context, situational constructivism, meaning or etc. So it means that we are dealing with qualitative perspective. So from this very uh, difference of the two paradigms or approaches or perspective, qualitative and quantitative, you can very easily uh, make a difference of your thesis by just understanding that which type of research you are going to make. Is your research is going to be qualitative? Are you going to be with, with number uh, or you are going to be uh, qualitative with observation, with uh, meaning, with understanding? So, if at this stage in the beginning of your study, you must make sure that you know which approach you are going to adopt in your uh, research.
authorities are having a difference of opinion over this uh, these two perspective they are of the opinion that people who are doing some research normally take up these two research side by side one as primary and one as secondary so on behalf of this we find that morgan explain how the two perspective can be combined so he identified four factors and he says that one is primary and other is secondary and which one is used first and which one is used second so on the basis of uh, his interpretation of these two he divides these two perspective into four factors so he says as number 1 quantitative primary and qualitative first so he defined this quantitative primary and qualitative first as the research begins with a qualitative approach as the secondary method using the qualitative data as a basis for collecting and interpreting the quantitative data the primary data so you see that starting one is starting with one approach and going to the other similarly at number 2 he lists quantitative primary quantitative first so in this the primary and the first are all quantitative so researcher begins by collecting quantitative primarily data as a basis for collecting and interpreting the primary qualitative data then comes qualitative primary and quantitative first here the researcher begins with the primary qualitative data using quantitative follow up to interpret the qualitative data so you must have seen that how does the research go in with these two perspective sometime it's uh, purely qualitative sometime it's purely quantitative sometime it's qualitative primary and quantitative first or same vice versa it needs some understanding of the topic so these are basically two paradigms of research methodology that when you are going to research you must make sure that which uh, approach or paradigm you are going to choose for your uh, research and by now i'm sure that you must be understanding that which approach you will be choosing on what behalf now we come to research types so to simplify the discussion research types are divided into whether they tend to use a qualitative or a quantitative perspective so research type again are determined by our main approach if it is qualitative or if it is quantitative although there is much overlapping as we have just said so the studies primarily quantitative in nature so when our studies are primarily quantitative in nature uh, we are going to use different types of research and out of them we begin with the experimental research so experimental research is one of the types of research in experimental research the researcher uses method originally applied in the physical or biological sciences in most experiment the following procedure are used that a sample of subject is collected and uh, they are assigned randomly to experimental and control group for example uh, two group of people are concerned one is uh, made subject to an experiment whereas other is not given any type of instruction so a treatment is administered to the experimental group only the two groups are then evaluated on the basis of the dependent variable the consequence of the dependent variable the later is the presumed cause of the dependent variable so in this uh, experimental research we divide people into two group and then try to determine the causes then we have another type of research which is quasi experimental it's 
also one way of experimental research but it differs from experimental research in two regards number one it does not use control group and it is always without uh, random assignment since a random assignment or the use of control groups is often not feasible in many areas like uh, education so this is another type of research then we have causal comparative research causal comparative research as it's very clear from the name casual causal comparative studies are designed to determine the possible causes of phenomenon sometimes these studies are called ex post facto research effects are promoted for example you take two people or group of people one of them is uh, promoted and one is not promoted so you try to determine that uh, what is the different what different has taken place uh, after uh, some one group was uh, promoted and one group was not promoted so causal comparative research can be very helpful in understanding the working of managers or working of the workforce at the workplace in understanding the way they work so causal comparative research always compare two things with different uh, variables so then we have correlation research so in correlation research or in these studies are basically designed to analyze the relationship between two or more variables ordinarily through the use of correlation coefficients these terms are very well known to coefficient very well known to you because you have done two courses on uh, statistics or like subject these uh, definitions are very well known to me and those of you who are good at statistic will find doing research especially when they come to uh, data analysis very easy because uh, uh, in data analysis especially when we are concerned with quantitative analysis like we find many method of uh, this uh, subject very useful so correlation studies basically are used to analyze the relationship between the two variables then we have descriptive research descriptive research as the term employs the purpose of descriptive research is to describe a phenomenon that how does a certain thing take place how people are motivated and why they are not motivated so descriptive studies report frequency average and percentage for example you might study the attitude of your managers so by using this type of research you can draw a conclusion about their attitude about their working tendencies then we have evaluation research evaluation research as uh, it's clear so it's basically made to evaluate it makes judgment about the merit or worth of uh, different programs especially these program concerning with education or products or organization so you may be asked to carry out different projects in in your uh, mfa in which you may, may be asked to make this type of uh, research evaluation research about people about programs about product of an organization so this uh, especially with uh, with the uh, people with an inclination of marketing and sales can find this type of research very enthusiastic of their taste so it's typically undertaken in order to aid administrators in making professional decisions it helps in the scene making evaluation studies are usually described as either formative or summative formative studies are made while a new program or product is being developed summative studies when it has been completed so you can know the end so you might do an evaluation of a new standard based product performing both a formative or a summative assessment so these were quantitative uh, types of research so we have uh, gone through different types of research which uh, which are quantitative 
research and we have seen that what type of research these can be these can be experimental quasi experimental evaluation and correlational etc etc so from here we move on to the other type of uh, research which is primarily uh, qualitative in nature so let's see that what type of uh, research available in qualitative research so we have case studies research so when our research tends to be a qualitative we can have uh, these type of uh, research at our disposal so case study research is one of its type case study research is empirical inquiry that investigates a contemporary phenomenon within its real life context so to understand you must be familiar with these uh, uh, this type of uh, research because in an, in many of your subject discuss different types of case studies and you can understand the situation how case study approach is helpful so when the boundaries between phenomenon and context are not clearly evident and in which multiple source of evidence are used qualitative perspective is concerned with this type of research is used here basic purpose of the qualitative paradigm is to help explore and describe and explain a phenomenon so in qualitative research we have case study research this is the one of the types of qualitative research and they help us in knowing some phenomena or they help us in explaining phenomena so another type of case study research is ethnographic research ethnographic research is also one type of case study research but it uses different theories and methods of anthropology to study the culture of organization companies etc academic institution etc so this can be helpful when we want to study culture when the main purpose of our study is to make some uh, conclusion regarding these cultural aspect then we have action research action research basically is used in education most action research documents tells us how when a educational problem is identified understood and solved by the practitioners so we have discussed types of research qualitative research and quantitative research so we have uh, now research methods which are used for these types of research so we uh, use at least five methods test and measurement methods interviews observation survey and documents so these are basically five methods which are used to collect data for these uh, types of research all uh, qualitative and quantitative so we use test and measurement test are administered and measurements made to determine the extent of change that will take place then we have interviews interviews are conducted with individuals or groups to ascertain their perception then we have observations observation are made to determine what is acting and what individuals are doing and we have surveys surveys are administered to assess options perception and attitude and then we have document documents are analyzed to establish record sometime different artifacts are used to analyze and establish different records different theories so these are five methods so we have today discuss basically some methodology and we send we have seen that there are basically two perspective qualitative and quantitative and how these are sometimes mixed up as i just cited a uh, different aspect of it by morgan which morgan said and then we have seen the types of research on and uh, on the basis of being qualitative or quantitative and what are the five method as i just said that all these uh, things are overlapping so for example if our type of research is experimental uh, we may use more than one method maybe our primary method is test and measurement but our additional method is observation or 
documents. Similarly, FR type of research is descriptive. Our additional method may be test or measurement and our different other survey may be our primary method and similarly. So, you will find it from the this uh, table that different possibilities are possible for the researcher. The basic purpose of the research is to uh, find uh, some conclusion to his, uh, his question, uh, to answer to his question or to his hypothesis. So, for this he may use any of these things. They are not uh, strictly prescribed to be picked uh, as one. It depends on the researcher that how, how he or she takes them. Obviously, in this whole process, you are not the only one who is, uh, who is going to uh, pick one or uh, the other. Obviously, you will be picking, but you will certainly be having help by your supervisor. Your supervisor is a person who will be assisting you at every uh, point when you find uh, yourself in difficulty. So, uh, whenever you are in any doubt, any problem, it's very important that you discuss your problem with your supervisor. So, let's sum up all these things and see that how these uh, two basic paradigm uh, differs from each other and what type of research and what type of research method we use. So, if our research is quantitative, uh, the key concepts are variable, controlled, reliable, hypothesized, uh, statistically significant and if our research is qualitative, uh, our key concepts are meaning, understanding, social construction, context and situation and researchers are normally set in different contexts like quantitative goes into agriculture, psychology, politics, political science, economics, basic sciences and similarly the other goes into anthropology, history, sociology etc. Similarly, the goals of these two are different. The goal of one is to test theories, establish facts, show relationship or to predict or to describe something statistically whereas the other describe ground theories, develop understanding, qualitative, describe multiple realities, capture naturally occurring behavior. So, quantitative is structured, predetermined, formal and specific while qualitative is evolving, always you are coming up with new theories, flexible and journal. And so far as the data is concerned, quantitative, the data is quantities, counts, measures, instruments, numbers, statistics, whereas for qualitative verbal descriptions, how different statements were made, field notes, observation, documents, interviews, etc. So, techniques or methods as we discussed for quantitative, it's experiment, precise experiment, structured observation, structural interviews, surveys. For qualitative, there we have observation, participant of observation, open-ended interviews, reviews of document, artifacts, etc. So, role of the researcher, that is also very important and it needs to be determined. You must know that what is your role going to be. In quantitative research, you are at a distant role. It is a short term detached from the people you are observing or the things and it is uninvolved. Whereas in qualitative, the researcher is close to the subject, it is long term understanding, involvement, empathetic, trusting, intense and so far as the data analysis is concerned, data analysis for quantitative it is deductive because it depends on the number, it is numerical and objective as I just said, it is data. And uh, so far as the qualitative is concerned, it is inductive, ongoing stress model, themes and concepts. So, this is what we have to discuss about methodology. 
I've gone into details in explaining different types of uh, methods, perspective and types of uh, research. You must by now be familiar with these uh, concepts. Obviously, uh, they seem uh, rather difficult in the beginning, but the way you go on with, with your research, uh, you start understanding these uh, things very easily. So far as data analysis is concerned, as I told you, I told you something about data analysis that how do we analyze data in the when we were discussing elements and uh, I have made reference uh, to it in the beginning of today's lecture too that I will be giving you uh, some main points in your handouts. So, because they involve uh, certain statistics. So, by uh, discussing all these things, now we have uh, uh, discussed almost the things that I wanted to discuss regarding writing a thesis. But it is not yet over. A very important uh, thing still needs to be discussed uh, rather more you can say two things. One is the format and the other is uh, the concept of uh, documentation. That is a very crucial concept for, for understanding or for writing thesis. So, you must make yourself familiar with uh, all these things. As I told you, it is not an easy job. Writing thesis or dissertation is not an easy job. Uh, it requires skills, understanding of uh, this whole uh, process. This is not just one single act, it is a process. So, you have to start it from the beginning to the end. You start from thinking about it and you go to end when you know about the concept of documentation. So, before, uh, in fact, by some uh, uh, people, by some authorities, we find that they discuss these two under one heading. But to make it more understanding, I have divided these two, the concept of understanding documentation and this format separately. So, we discuss format. When we discuss format, what do we mean by format? We have uh, discussed format of a letter, we have discussed format of uh, a memorandum, we have discussed format of a report, proposal, I mean discussing all those types of communications, we have been discussing this uh, format too, that how one format differs from another, how the format of a letter is different from a report and uh, while discussing the long report especially we discuss format of a long report and you must have seen that it is quite different from the format of a letter. Similarly, the format of a thesis is different from the format of a report. Though, so far as the main parts are concerned, they remain the same. We have a title page uh, here too. We have an abstract here too. We have the main body here too, but uh, we need to discuss things in length. I want you to be very particular because every thesis is uh, written by a certain format. And uh, unless you understand this uh, concept of format, uh, your thesis uh, may not be uh, approved by uh, the committee. So, every committee, uh, every organization, uh, establishes its uh, certain type of format and uh, it tells that uh, about how documentation is to be uh, to be given citation I mean citation in in text citation is to be made and uh, what things need to be taken care of. So, in the format we have to understand that it discusses the font which font you are going to use. Obviously, you are not in that era when there was no availability of any word processor or uh, uh, electric typewriter, etc. You are living in uh, this age of technology. 
and uh, you have access to all these things and you are very well familiar with these uh, things so you must know that which font is to be used and uh, beside which font is to be used within paragraph which font is to be used as heading as title as subheading so make yourself familiar with the uh, this thing that where to use a certain font which font in the title and when which font in the text then headings heading of the chapters and heading within the chapters then subheading then which things are to be italicized and which are to be underlined and which are not to be underlined and which are not to be italicized make yourself familiar with these things then you have to know the page size page size which page size is to be used for thesis this is sing where you are going to use single space where you are going to use double space how you have to make uh, indentation at certain points these are very important for writing thesis make yourself familiar so that you start writing your thesis according to the specification that it does not happen uh, at the end of the day that your thesis uh, does not conform to these specification so uh, when we say format as i just said it includes all these things it also includes the quality of the paper that you are going to use and uh, how you are going to present your first synopsis how you are going to present your your first thesis and your final copy of the thesis when your thesis is uh, approved so these things are very important make yourself familiar with these things for example we say that the font used is time new roman chapter heading 18 bold caps headings 14 bold caps subheading 14 bold uh, do not tell a size or underline the headings and subheading text font is 12 paper quality offset paper 90 gram maybe specified differently in your organization but these things are specified so paper a4 and its uh, measurement and spacing as i just said it is normally double so binding you will find binding instruction that how you are going to bind the first copy and how you are going to bind the final copies and then in some cases you will be asked to have binding in certain colors so color of the binding will also be given similarly we will be discussing when we discuss these uh, citations citation manual which citation manual is to be uh, used you must make yourself we'll be uh, discussing when we discuss the concept of uh, documentation you have to take care of the margins but we'll discuss it at its right place let's first discuss uh, the concept of documentation what do we mean by documentation when we are going to make a literature review we are going to cite many references in our research so these references must be mentioned in our thesis in our in our writing very clearly correctly precisely there shouldn't be a, an impression of uh, plagiarization plagiarization mean that uh, we take the work of somebody else and give it our own name so be very concerned about this uh, this bad thing that whatever you have to present you must present of your own effort never do this never use any plagiarized work or for earning any name so the in this concept of uh, documentation what we uh, want to understand is that we have to explain in our 
in our text that from where we have taken a certain uh, information. So, the source must be given the name of the source, the name of the book, uh, the page number in certain cases. So, this concept varies according to some basic uh, theories of uh, this uh, concept of documentation. Basically, we have at least four, four types of uh, these uh, concepts. We can say that number one is MLA, Modern Language Association, this is one concept. Number two is APA, this is American Psychological Association. Number third is Chicago Manual and number four is Council of Biology Editor CBE. So, these are four types of concepts of documentation which tell that how sources must be mentioned within the uh, text uh, that uh, uh, when we know the name of the writer, how do we explain it in our text when we have one writer, when we have more than one writer, when we have more than two, three uh, writers, how to, whether we need to ma uh, mention the number of the page or the year of the publication. And then obviously, when we are reading different things, we are using books. So, how to uh, make references to these books, we are using articles, so how to uh, mention the source of article, we are using different journals, periodicals, so how to mention these periodical and journals in our uh, research. We are collecting information from net, so how do we mention this source in our text. Similarly, sometime uh, the book is there, but uh, we don't know the author. So, there can be multiple types of these uh, sources and we must make ourselves familiar with all types of these sources and the way they are uh, mentioned in our text. So, basically as I told you, there are uh, these four types, MLA, Modern Language Association. Uh, it's a parenthetical citation system. I mean, parenthetical after the citation, you give the name and the page number every time you use the reference after that uh, quotation. And then we have uh, APA, this is again a parenthetical citation system, American Psychological Association, and then Chicago Manual and CBE. We are going to use APA. I mean, our concept of documentation is of. American Psychological Association. Normally, this is chosen in uh, social sciences. MLA is normally chosen uh, in the field of education and uh, APA is chosen in the field of uh, social sciences. So, as we are from this uh, field, we are going to choose this concept of documentation. So, we will be studying in detail that what type of this concept is. Basically, it is a synthetical citation system in which source name and publication, publication date and sometime page references made. So, we begin with the different aspect of it. We begin with the title page. Our title page is 8.5 by 11 inches. So, this is the standard size of the page and uh, we give one inch margin at each side. So, title page includes a running heading for publication, title and byline and affiliation, the name of the student and your affiliation with the organization. Remember that there are always changing taking place in these concept of uh, documentation whether they may be MLA or APA or any other. So, whenever you are in any uh, any doubt, it's better to 
consult the uh, website they are available at website and I'll be giving uh, its uh, address too so you can easily approach it so you begin with the the title page begins with the running title and then other things we will discuss details of uh, this citation this uh, uh, APA style in our next lecture because it needs some discussion today we have uh, discussed methodology methodology of uh, research and we have seen that we have basically two paradigms two perspective qualitative and quantitative and on the basis of these two paradigms we have then different types of uh, research based on these two paradigms either they are qualitative or they are quantitative and then we have discussed uh, different methods of of this research so we discussed five methods to collect data maybe test on measurement maybe service etc etc so after that we discuss basic format of the uh, thesis i'm sure that by now you must be familiar uh, with thesis writing though it is not the end of the story as i tell you time and again that thesis writing is a very serious type of communication a written communication it requires your understanding it requires more homework than any other type of uh, writing you uh, must have seen that in report writing we discuss a lot about doing homework for writing reports especially when they are research reports but this is is purely a research and it requires more homework and if, uh, the first stage of this homework is understanding this whole phenomenon this concept of thesis its parts its formats how how this uh, this uh, methodology is to be to be chosen so taking care of all these things you can very easily write good thesis or good research papers and you can make uh, the writing research paper your strong points we have just one lecture to go and uh, we have to discuss some very important features of this concept of documentation and we will discuss some some of these features in that lecture until then it's khuda hafiz from my side and see you then khuda hafiz